a little bit of background about me. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Emma. Um, I was an engineering manager and data platform at Stripe for a couple years, starting in 2017. Um, back when data platform was just a few people and the whole company was a few hundred people. Um, but even then, uh, we were very data heavy. So I think uh, a lot of the learnings we had back then is still probably helpful for a lot of you all. So let's get started. Um, so why exceptional correctness? Like, why does that even matter, right? Um, and the reason is because, as you can imagine, um, Stripe deals with financial data. Um, we deal with transactions, we deal with actual money. It's very important that we do things correctly. It's not like a social media platform where it's clicks or impressions. It can be a little fungible, it's all right, but for us it needs to be absolutely correct. Some of the systems that um, run on data at Stripe, even as early as 2017, were for example, Treasury, you can read the description of what that means. It's a little like FinTech stuff thrown in, um, reconciliation billing and a lot more. So literally if our data platforms didn't work, we wouldn't know how much money we had in our banks. So what did data platform look like back then? This is obviously very simplified, but um, we were uh, around three people <laughs> when I joined because uh, half the team moved to a different team because on-call was so bad. Um, and But we maintained everything that you see here. Um, so all the different pieces here are essentially still the backing bone of what Stripe Data Platform looks like. And um, it was really great um, that we owned all of it for data correctness because we can insert it at different points in the system. So how do we be correct at Stripe? So we start with, as you can imagine, a lot of checks that are automated. Um, we provide these checks for our users. Our users can also write their own checks. And they're basically a very simple um, airflow decorator, which is a scheduler that we use that you can call in. And what happens is these jobs will run automatically after the job if you use the correct whatever decorator that you, you want. Um, and these decorators are simple, like the ones you can see here. It's like we want to make sure that the data is increasing, it's never decreasing, or there's unique keys. And there's actually more complicated checks where it actually checks the primary keys in the resulting table actually exist in another table so that there's no weirdness going on. Um, so anybody can write these checks, but we make it really easy to call them in. Um, and another thing, if, uh, you know, like kind of part and parcel with this is what do you do when, when, when something goes wrong? And we have very complex fallback behaviors defined for all of our data jobs. So for example, you know, if, it's not super critical, we get everything fresh. It actually does automatically fall back to using yesterday's output. So it doesn't do a rerun. It just falls, it tries three times or however many times you, the user defines and it will just be like, I give up, it's okay. I'm gonna continue the pipeline with yesterday's output. And then a little bit higher than that is like, okay, well, so maybe something's wonky with today's data. Let's use yesterday's data, but rerun the pipeline and continue with that. And you know, as you can imagine, like the most severe case would be like you actually block the pipeline and just like not move forward and just like halt everything. And um, that actually is also marked with a with a with a decorator that says this is really severe and we don't want to move forward if it's the case. And there's 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 even more than this, and we provide all of these as well. Um, one of the, another way that we make sure that everything is correct is. We deal a lot with S3 um, eventual consistency. It's not an issue anymore since 2020. But if you worked at a company that started before 2020, you will probably see code that guards against this, um, but still ghosts in the closet. Uh, we basically wrote our own metadata layer to make sure that things are consistent. We basically write extra metadata alongside S3 data to make sure that all pieces are in place before we let the pipeline move on. And we got so into this metadata layer that you'll see eventually that we actually moved on to a whole new um, table format as an extension of this. It gave us a lot of capabilities in terms of efficiency, in terms of like knowing what data to lift up. And another thing that um, our teams built is um, type safe libraries for Spark. So uh, as you can imagine, like we use a lot of data frames in Spark. We don't have PySpark, you know, even now, <laughs> but, but we did use a lot of Scala and 
Um, our engineers really wanted to be sure that we are super correct as much as possible. And Spark didn't provide the right encoders for us. All the types that we support at Stripe were very special snowflakes sometimes um, because we use Mongo, we have weird Ruby types and we need to support it in our Spark job. So we actually went down this ASC rabbit hole in order to make um, everything super type safe. So we actually implemented our own encoders to make sure that every single type at Stripe um, is supported in Spark so people can use type safe operations. Um, in addition, we actually eventually create our own UI based observability platform just for data. Um, it was quite primitive when we started building it, but the idea is to eventually hydrate it to a point where it could be the point where you would specify decorators for fallback behavior or specify um, behaviors for kind of tests. But what it does right now is actually it has a tight connection with Airflow and also the metadata layer. So it would know when jobs are running, what kind of data, like the size of the data that it inherited, what the column names are, what the column types are. You can compare day-to-day -day runs, you can compare um, kind of like the, the run time, and it can do some uh, inference on when the end of the pipeline is gonna be, given how things are running right now. Um, one of the traits of you know, our data pipelines at Stripe is like the DAG is extremely deep. So sometimes it's really hard to predict when your data is going to ultimately land. And a lot of stakeholders come and ask our data science teams and ultimately us, like if something failed or something's running slow, when is it ultimately going to arrive? And this UI helps answer that problem without everybody, you know, paying us all the time. So hopefully, you know, <laughs> that gets a little bit better. But essentially, this is um, kind of like some of the essential data that we use. And again, it pulls data from Airflow and just the metadata layer on S3. Um, and then it's time to bring out the big guns. So we care about accuracy so much that we actually recompute the universe quite frequently. Um, part of the reason is like some of our data models are not totally immutable, even though it looks like they should be. Um, and to make sure that we are completely accurate when these when, when a lot of like these kind of changes happen um, to these types of data that you know, should be immutable is we actually recompute the universe for our most important jobs. This means we take all the data from the beginning of Stripe and recompute it. Um, the good thing is we are not like a Facebook or, you know, like these big social me media companies that have so much data that doing that is like completely impossible or prohibitively expensive. For us, it's actually still a doable thing and we do rely on it sometimes. So just, just so you know, like it's okay to bring out the big guns. You don't have to, you know, like completely like engineer yourself out of this sometimes. Um, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about trade-offs. As you can imagine, all the things we mentioned so far adds uh, latency, right, as one of them. Um, all the checks that we do, all the fallback behavior, do the retries as well as recomputing the universe, that takes time. So that means we're sacrificing how long our pipelines run and um, sometimes even like predictability in terms of like how standard deviations tend to be quite large sometimes when jobs do fail because we add checks so many different layers of the stack. So that's one of the things we did explicitly make um, a decision to sacrifice on. Um, and another thing you can imagine part and parcel with latency as well as reruns is like cost. Um, we actually spend a lot of money <laughs> um, on uh, compute. Um, as do most companies, like our AWS spend is probably one of the larger spends. Um, and that's also something that we decided to um, just deal with because we really do care about correctness so much. And, you know, the silver lining to all of this is that because we were forced to kind of be so correct, we actually need to also start looking into tools that make sure that we can be a little bit more efficient um, given the situation that we're in. So we actually do... Um, like I mentioned, like the metadata layer, we actually moved on to Apache Iceberg um, around 2020. And that really helps us make more efficient data lists because, you know, you, you have a lot more like, you know, just metadata on like which columns that you need to lift and, and you know, like which columns you need to recompute. Even if it's a recompute the world job, it does the, the, the storage layer much more efficiently. So that was really great. And, um, and you know, having so much metadata and having a table format like Iceberg also lets us do cool things like data locality, which, um, you know, like you can store data in other lo locations, but your big job can also like lift the correct data from different, you know, regions. Cool. And then uh, the conclusion here is 
build a good data system. <laughs> um, but but really, you can add steps for data correctness all throughout the stack from beginning to end. And because we did this so early on at Stripe, we just we sleep better at night, right? We know things will be the correct uh, as much as we would prefer it to be. And because the system is designed the way it is, it's also very self-serving. Um, you can do correct construct on your own and you will know that things are gonna be okay. Um, yeah, so then you can be happy and sleep well at night. And that's it, that's the talk. Thank you so much.